In the Transcriptomics 2 course, we focused on the linkages between gene expression and phenotype. We spoke about key concepts that are needed to understand the methods often utilized to find differences in gene expression between experimental conditions. Then, we discussed differential gene expression and continue to look at typical challenges of this approach. We use the t-test and then use dsec2 to run a differential expression pipeline. Next, we use factor regression analysis, and as a result, we learn to detect obvious differences between preset groups, as well as expand on that idea to more subtle differences represented by factors that might be interacting with each other. In this video, we will review what we learned in the Transcriptomics 2 course. Transcriptomics 2 has four parts. Introduction to Transcriptomics 2, which is a review of course objectives and topics. Hypothesis testing, concepts related to the analysis of the difference between means of sample groups. Differential expression analysis, which are advanced methods for normalization, analysis, and interpretation of differential expressed genes. And then factor regression analysis, which is an understanding of regression and application to factors that are affecting experimental design. After the topics are reviewed, a conclusion section offers more technical details on each method, as well as a summary for the course. Let's take a look at the course material in greater detail. The course started with an overview of learning objectives and identified the next challenges after we generate our table of expression. We learned which genes we should consider significant for interpretation. Depending on the experiment's design, we have several considerations to make around our strategies for analysis. These include analysis methods to select for differentially expressed genes, or for genes that explain a given factor in the experiment. To address these questions, we reviewed the data in the gene expression table. Depending on the type of steps that we have selected in the RNA-seq processing pipeline, we get an output with the column names as samples and genes in the rows, as well as expression levels in RPKM, FPKM, TPM, or read counts. This data has certain properties that required additional steps before they could be used in the parametric tests that we've discussed in the course. The methods included analysis of the differences between means, as well as the analysis of variance. Both assume normal distribution that can be achieved by log normal transformation. Further normalization that affects the separation of noisy and significant genes represented in the data was accomplished by using quantile normalization. The table output from the processing pipeline had to be prepared for analysis, which uses statistical terminology that is prevalent in the course, such as p-values, distribution, mean, and others. We also reviewed the idea behind the t-test as an approach to identify genes with differences in expression between means of sample groups. These concepts were illustrated using a hands-on assignment. The assignment was designed to illustrate how the statistical test helped in selecting genes with detectable differences between the triple negative and ER positive subtypes of breast cancer that are studied in the patient-derived xenograft model project. T-test is one of the approaches used for hypothesis testing, which provides us with a p-value that can be used to find genes with a true, non-random difference in the expression levels between groups of samples. However, Multiple considerations for differential gene expression analysis had to be made along the way and included log normal transformation, adjustment for false discovery rate, a calculation of the fold change, and the annotation of found genes. To automate this process, we relied on packages such as DSEC and EdgeR. Special attention was given to the biological interpretation of found genes using annotation by gene ontology terms, as well as the grouping of genes belonging to the same pathway. To understand the biology, we focused on the PDX models used in the project. SID nod mice have severe combined amino deficiency with no mature T and B cells. SID CB17 mice have severe combined amino deficiency, but they have normal natural killer cells, macrophages, as well as granulocytes. Athymic nude mice lack a thymus and are unable to produce T cells. XID mice lack a thymus, resulting in no functional T cells and also have mutated bead lymphocytes. We also looked at the type of tumors in our data. Triple negative breast cancer refers to any breast cancer that does not express the genes for estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, or human epidermal growth factor 2. We then discussed the physiology of the estrogen receptor and highlighted a few key points. The actions of estrogen are mediated by the estrogen receptor, which is a dimeric nuclear protein that binds to DNA and controls gene expression. 
we briefly discuss the flux of metabolites from cholesterol to two key intermediates, estriol and estrone, as well as how these intermediates function to traverse their target cell's plasma membrane via simple diffusion onto the nucleus where they bind to the estrogen receptor. Like other steroid hormones, estrogen enters passively into the cell, where it binds to and then activates the estrogen receptor. This estrogen ER complex binds to specific DNA sequences called hormone response elements, which activate the transcription of target genes. Because estrogen enters all cells, its actions are dependent on the presence of the estrogen receptor in the cell. The estrogen receptor is expressed in specific tissues, including ovary, uterus, and breast. For biological interpretation of the differentially expressed genes, we found some intriguing insights into the underlying differences between ER positive and triple negative breast cancer. Of the 20 types of genes that were upregulated in TN, we saw that four belonged to a class of molecules called non-coding RNAs. Specifically, these were long non-coding RNAs. We also found that two key factors in the neutrophil migration pathway were differentially expressed in TN breast cancer. These were TNF-alpha IP6 and CXCL8. We learned about how USP30AS1's DUB activity is downregulated in TN breast cancer, which inhibits the cancer cell's ability to modulate proteasomal degradation. Ubiquitination is an ATP-dependent process that is carried out by three classes of enzymes. Lastly, we discussed how SOX9 overexpression in TN breast cancer promoted beta-catenin nuclear translocation key events that in concert enhance the WNT pathway that acts to modulate the nuclear transcription of the genes in the TCF, LEF conduit. In summary, this course was dedicated to the downstream analysis, which is a term often used to represent the reductionist approach to analysis. Collected data and sequencing reads was reduced to a structured table with thousands of elements. Then, we used analysis to find an interpretable small number of genes, which were further grouped by their common functions and interpreted by pathway activity. After a quiz, we proceeded to the second part of the course that speaks about regression, which is a way to find relationships in data. This was illustrated using several examples, data that was intuitive, such as the association between body weight and height, as well as more complex and biologically relevant, such as insulin's role in upregulating the synthesis of proteins and anabolic pathways. The t-test, regression, and factor analysis models are powerful methods that deal with data and they are embedded in popular bioinformatics techniques such as PCR, EDGEAR, DSEC, Network Analysis, and ANOVA. These are commonly referred to in publications with the assumption that everyone understands their outputs, which are adjusted p-values, r-squared coefficients, as well as the relationships between the genes, whether they are statistics such as correlation or biologic, like a pathway interaction. After completing the course, you should be ready for more advanced analysis of gene expression data. In Transcriptomics 3, we explore different methods for identifying groups of samples without prior knowledge and then examine methods for developing classifiers from known samples to classify unknown samples. We will then be inquiring into the clustering as well as the classification methods using biological examples from the publication by Damon et al., which was modeling precision treatment of breast cancer. We will reanalyze the data from the paper and consider the differences between our own analysis and those are the authors.